everybody, welcome back to Bible from the Dunns. Today we started the book of Zephaniah in chapter number one. So let's get into it. Oh, Zeph. Oh, Zephy. All right, so whenever you get into the book of Zephaniah, well, number, number one thing you need to know, Zephaniah's name means that God, the Lord, Yahweh, has hidden. And so if you want to just kind of put it in, this, in these terms, that God protects, which is odd because this is really a book about the coming judgment of the Lord. As a matter of fact, one of the conversations we just had, and I forget who was whining, uh, it was that it's oh, yet again another book uh, about the judgment about judgment. I'm like, how are we gonna talk about this? This is what we keep talking about. We keep talking about the Babylonians coming in or the Assyrians or somebody. This is another book on judgment. And it really uh we're not, that's not wrong. So it's one of these things where we've got all of these prophets, all of these minor prophets, we've got all of these guys with the same message. The message is that the enemy is coming and that there's going to be a day when everything is over, overthrown. Now, here's what we need to recognize is that all of these messages, horrible, I need you to be sweet. He's jealous. All of these messages are to God's people. Now, let's put this in perspective. What do we know about the story of Jonah? Jonah was sent to Nineveh. Jonah was sent to preach that overthrow is coming. Repent. Repent. And what did they do? They did. They, did. they repented. They <clears throat> now, we obviously know they didn't stay repentant because of the, because we read we other minor read prophets, right? Thing. Yeah. But uh, but one minor prophet came in and said, hey, you guys need to repent or God's going to get mad. And they did. And yet you go through Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Nahum, keep going. You know the rest of them? Habakkuk, Habakkuk Zephaniah, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Zechariah Malachi. 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 All right, so, so when you get into all of these people, what are they? They're all got the same message that, that judgment is coming and you should repent. Trouble. And guess what God's people do? God's people do not repent. They're dumb. Right? And so when, you, when you're reading through this story, uh, like look in verse 4. He says, I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will cut off every trace of Baal from this place. So he's talking about God moving in and cleansing his people in his land from all of their wicked idol worship. And what he's saying is, is that when God moves in to judge, he's going to start at his own house with his own people because his own sheep do not hear his voice. That's big. Now, what y'all get out of it? So Jackson and I were kind of talking about what we see in God's people and what they're doing wrong, what they're getting called out for, because we don't want to do those things. We don't want to get called out for that. And so what I saw, something I noticed is he calls them out for mingling their worship of God with the worship of other gods. And that really hit me because I think if we really were honest with our church culture today, that's that's probably the closest thing that we deal with with idolatry. That's probably our most used way of, of idolatry. We're never going to say we don't worship God. You know, like we love God. And I, I think people mean that and believe that. But our actions are what really tell who we love and who we worship. And so what we are really good at, and I'm guilty myself, is loving God, but compartmentalizing and, and giving God this much of our heart. And then by our actions... We show that we love other things, and we give that parts of our heart. And we think it's okay because we still love God, but God wants all of our heart. All of that should belong to Him, and everything else should fall away in comparison to our love for God and our worship of Him. And so I don't want to be like that. I want to make sure I don't give my worship away to anyone but God. Yeah, I think you said a good while ago before we started filming, you even said that it's when you, uh, that even though you're giving most of your heart to God, when you're giving any of your heart, any Something little else. piece to a way, that's, that's idolatry. That's I think, right. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Jax, what'd you, uh, what'd you think about any of this? Okay. So one of the verses that we pointed out while we were, uh, like when we were talking about this after we read it was verse number 12. And that says, and at that time I'll search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who settle down comfortably. So, uh, as humans, like naturally we go to our happy place and our comfortable spot. Uh, the black couch, it's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> we like we like to sit there, and uh, we don't like things to get too hard. And um, the problem with that is that there's no growth in anything we do when we stay comfortable. When we stay comfortable, we get surpassed by other things, and because we're not getting better. Um, and so this goes for everything, like your sports, your academics, 
and even our relationship with God as it's seen right here. And uh, so when we go complacent with our uh, relationship with God, then we're not growing in our faith and we just stay the same. And by doing that, we also like our faith diminishes and for uh, sure. same with our relationship. If you're not, if you're not pursuing God, you don't stay the same. You, you fall away. Right, that's just our behind. human nature as sinners. And something that's important to point out as we look at those, those two things, um, the problem I think is when we have a relationship with God, sometimes we forget we are to be in pursuit of God, of him as a, as a being, as a person, as God. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times we can give our heart away or we get comfortable and stagnant in our relationship with him when we think it's a list of tasks or we think it's a lifestyle that, uh, a, a cultural lifestyle that really it's not a relationship. And I think that's a good way to keep it fresh, to keep giving our whole hearts to God is it's a relationship. Remember that. Remember that it's a, a passionate love. I've recently been reminded of the book of Hosea. And think of it as a, a marriage or a love relationship in that aspect. That's not going to be okay if I give him some of my heart. But all these other people have parts of my oh, heart right. too. Yeah, that ain't cute. So, so think of it as a relationship and that helps you to continue to pursue God. It's love. It's overflow. Yeah, and notice how very serious this gets. Verse number two, I will utterly consume everything from the face of the land. So to consume there means to sweep away completely. So Zephaniah is going extremely Old Testament in this, where he's saying this coming judgment day of the Lord is described as sweeping as even Noah's flood. And how bad is it going to be? Well, notice the last verse of the chapter. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. So even their riches that they have gone all in on pursuing worldliness and worldly things, even their vast riches cannot buy or ransom their freedom from this coming judgment. Why? Because, uh, because God is who's in charge of everything, and uh, that includes them. Their priorities have been wrong. Their worship has been wrong. Therefore, nothing has been right. Mm. All right. So we'll see you tomorrow in Zephaniah chapter number two, a call to repentance. All right. Bye. 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 Bear TV. No, never. We're, we're doing it. No, we're, we're not. No, I don't fit here. You do need to scoot towards your mother a little bit. I don't Lean in, Dust. Lean in. <laughs> it's happy face. Jax, be happy. I'm happy. Stop looking at me. <laughs> okay. You're going to intro? No, I don't want to anymore. Go. Five, four. What are you doing? Zephaniah, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, everyone. Hold on. I'll email right now. Dude, come on. I don't know.